Even when your job is literally overthinking video games, there are some gaming mysteries that we still can't explain. Like what the hell does Resident Evil mean? Or just where does the apostrophe go in Demon's Souls? We've spoken on this topic before, and the comments on those videos are packed with similar unsolved mysteries that have plagued you, the seekers after the truth among the outside Xbox audience. Here then are our seven favourite mysteries suggested by you, the viewers. Enjoy, and beware spoilers ahead for the following games. Do you even know who I am? The most recognized scholar on the Dwemer in all of Tamriel. And you people keep bothering me. I... I'm sorry, I... I got too excited. I'm in the middle of some very stressful work, and I, and I shouldn't have yelled. Our world has plenty of unexplained mysteries. Disappearances of planes over the Bermuda Triangle, the circumstances surrounding the 12 megaton explosion at Tunguska in 1908, and what the hell happened to Josh Hartnett's career? It's always been the objective of the Elder Scrolls to create a convincing fantasy world with a rich history and culture that tries to be as deep and involving as possible. That's why they hired a lore master to keep track of it all. With a hawker loaf and a storm matronach with the wabajack and an old moth priest who was whispering magica. Which came first, the job or the facial hair and the monocle? Little bonus mystery for you there. It's hardly surprising that the Elder Scrolls series has its fair share of mysteries too then, but by far the most enduring one is the disappearance of an entire race of people, the Dwemer, or Dwarves, not shown here. What? I told you, they disappeared. It's all the more intriguing because the Dwemer have clearly had a huge impact on the world of Tamriel. There are vast, sprawling dungeons that feature their distinctive steampunk decor, and they've left a whole host of robotic automatons around the place to spoil your adventuring day. If I find out I was just killed by the Dwemer version of a Roomba, I'm going to be very upset. There's a book introduced in the game Morrowind that suggested the Dwemer disappeared in an instant during an event called the Battle of Red Mountain, which is that big volcano in Morrowind, after an ill-fated attempt to create a new god. That's contradicted by another book in later game Skyrim that claims the dwarves might have disappeared over several years or decades, killed by something more boring like a plague. Either way, we've no idea where the Dwemer went, and we can't imagine the development team at Bethesda are in any hurry to solve the mystery in The Elder Scrolls VI, because then how will they get away with filling the place with creepy abandoned metal dungeons full of deadly spider rumbas? Wait, does this mean I'm going to have to do my own vacuuming now? Great. Welcome to Advanced Mission Training. This operation originally took place in Sydney. The target was Calvin Ritter, Infamous cat burglar, also known as the Sparrow. You will need to infiltrate the yacht, isolate and eliminate your target and exfiltrate, all without arousing suspicion. It's easy to imagine that Agent 47 was always the perfect hitman on account of his deadliness, his adaptability, and his ability to take on any role and seamlessly blend into any crowd. Do you like drugs? I got some. See? Flawless. The first game in the recent Hitman trilogy, however, shows us that this wasn't always the case. In fact, Agent 47 had to go to school, like everyone else, although his school, the ICA training facility, was a lot more practical based than your local liberal arts college. We see this in the earliest Hitman missions, Freeform Training and The Final Test, in which Agent 47 is undertaking his Hitman exams, in an immersive training area in which the buildings and environments are a set, and all the people are actors playing roles. Now, we're told that the weapons in this training exercise are simulated, but even so, why did any of the hundreds of extras playing mechanics, waiting staff, yacht crew, security guards, and even the targets agree to take part? For a start, the ICA training facility is, apparently, located in the mountains of Greenland, so it's not exactly a convenient gig for most people, even if the ICA doesn't decide to bump you off afterwards to stop you blabbing about it to the papers. Then there's the fact that you can tell me these weapons are simulated all you like. I'm not sure how you simulate someone having their head smashed in with a hammer. Or getting tipped headfirst over a third-story balcony. And that's not even mentioning the opportunity kills on the actors playing the actual targets. Let's just say I hope the actor the ICA got to play Jasper Knight, the target in the mission The Final Test, was being paid well. Down. You did it. 
and that he filled out the next of kin form properly. I... I sometimes have these blackouts. Times where I don't know what I'm doing. As if I'm someone completely different. The only thing I remember afterwards is the bodies. The bodies in the water. In the opening minutes of Heavy Rain, luckless protagonist Ethan loses one son to a tragic car accident and the other son to a kidnapping. Sean! Where's Sean? As if that wasn't bad enough, and it fully is, he's also having unexplained blackouts where he loses time and wakes up somewhere else. <sighs> As if that wasn't bad enough, and again, it fully is, Ethan also wakes up holding origami. You know, like the origami that the notorious child murderer, the origami killer, leaves with his victims. This doesn't look good for you, Ethan. Not least because it was during one of these supposed blackouts that Ethan's son Sean went missing. <laughs> it all looks pretty suspicious to the player, the police, even to Ethan himself. I'm the origami killer. I black out, and then the murdering starts. But then as the game progresses, these blackouts, having served their purpose as a plot device, just stop happening as Ethan becomes too busy chopping off bits of himself and rolling around in broken glass to black out and wander off. Ah! So what was up with the blackouts? What was causing them? And why did they always lead Ethan to Carnaby Corner, the place where the actual origami killer grew up and lost his brother in the accident that would set him on the path to becoming a paper folding child drowner? The game itself offers no real explanation, leaving the early game blackouts as a substantial mystery for us the player, and yet another bit of terrible luck for Ethan. I, I did. I, I didn't leave, I watched the carousel. How could Sean and... possibly have vanished if you were right there watching the carousel? However, outside of the game, behind the scenes, Heavy Rain developer Quantic Dream has since explained how in the course of making the game, they ditched a story thread in which Ethan originally had a psychic link to the origami killer. The link made Ethan's blackouts more like telepathic visions, but when this supernatural plot element was dumped and the blackouts were kept in, they became a straight up unsolved mystery within the textual evidence of the game itself that made Ethan look guilty as heck. You try telling the cops you're being framed by a plot hole. Trust me, they are not receptive. Being as it is an RPG series, the Fallout games give you lots of perks with which to improve your character. Such as Lead Belly, which reduces the amount of radiation you get from drinking water, Light Step, which stops you setting off mines, and Cannibal, where you can eat corpses to regain health. Improve is a… general term. One perk that you're not going to want to be without, however, is the Mysterious Stranger perk, which, once chosen, gives you a chance of a trench-coated figure randomly showing up during a fight and absolutely owning your enemies for you. The stranger announces himself with a cool guitar riff and then blasts away at whoever you're fighting with his signature weapon, a magnum revolver that does a bonkers amount of damage before vanishing as mysteriously as he appeared with yet another cool guitar sting. The mysterious stranger is, as his name implies, mysterious. Who is he? Where did he come from? How does he appear out of nowhere and then vanish without a trace? He's like some kind of… enigmatic, unknown person. We've had a few tantalizing glimpses of deeper Mysterious Stranger lore in the Fallout series. In Fallout New Vegas, you can meet a character called the Lonesome Drifter, who it seems is the son of the Mysterious Stranger, if his tales of his father are to be believed. Ma always said he was a real mysterious fella, even when he was with her. Like he was a stranger sometimes. You can also convince him to give you his father's gun, which is a bit of a giveaway, on account of the noise it makes when you get it out. <laughs> In Fallout 4, you can also find Nick Valentine's case notes on the stranger, who he has apparently been investigating. The highlight is Nick's assessment that, best case, the man's an amoral lunatic, worst case, a prolific serial killer. But then he does dress an awful lot like Nick Valentine. Are the two related in some way? Bethesda aren't saying. I guess as long as he keeps showing up and one-shotting tough enemies for me, I don't really mind. And if we knew who he was, he wouldn't be the mysterious stranger anymore. He'd be the… known about… regular friend. And I've already got lots of those. 
and they're useless in a fight. If you're going to hunt ethically, you should be hunting for a purpose, such as for food, and you should use the whole of the animal. Yes, even that bit. Just put it in a hot dog bun and close your eyes or something. Assassin's Creed 3 understood this and took a hard line on wasteful hunting. Living as a Native American is about living in harmony with nature, so if as Connor you ran around the wilderness killing animals without stopping to skin them, the game would desynchronize you and boot you out of the simulation. Makes a change from getting desynchronized in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood for shanking those annoying minstrels. What if I also skinned them? Because I would be prepared to do that. The thing about Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag though, is that it's all about being a pirate, so it's less about living in harmony with nature, and more about swashbuckling, carousing, and downloading illegal MP3s of sea shanties. Even by pirate standards though, Edward Kenway's hunting technique is fantastically wasteful. For some inexplicable reason, in order to create a single tiny level 3 pistol holster, you're expected to kill two humpback whales, one of the largest mammals on earth. I assume each pistol is popped inside a blowhole? Look, I'm sure the resultant pistol holster is both stylish and functional, but why does it take two entire enormous whales to make something this small? Plus, it feels like there might be other useful parts of two 50-foot-long humpback whales. Just off the top of my head, maybe enough whale meat to feed your crew for a month, whale oil for lamps, blubber, and probably an actual ton of additional skin to create all sorts of fancy hats and coats. But no, you get your measly level 3 pistol holster, and then presumably lob the remains of two once magnificent beasts back into the sea to rot. It's not like I'm even expecting you to use all of the animal. I mean, where would you even find a hot dog bun that big? Got something that might interest you. <laughs> Anyone who's played Resident Evil 4 will remember The Merchant, a travelling salesman who looks like a walking collection of sentient carpets and who talks like he's auditioning for an extras role in a Pirates of the Caribbean film. Got a selection of good things on sale, stranger. The merchant pops up regularly to buy the various treasures you find along the way, as well as to sell you new weapons. He's even got some rare and exclusive stock that he'll give you access to if you're lucky. What you need that for? Go and hunt an elephant? Uh, no, it's for all the ganados and tentacle monsters around this place. Have you not seen them? I guess they're not buying much. <laughs> The merchant is already a pretty mysterious figure, but the biggest question surrounding this piratey purveyor of pistols is whether or not he is infected with the Las Plagas parasite that has turned everyone else in the area into violent angry ganados. The evidence for the merchant is infected with Las Plagas argument is pretty strong. First of all, he has the glowing red eyes that are common to the infected found throughout the game, and that you'd probably be more aware of if you didn't spend all your time trying to get as far away from them as possible. What little of his skin we can see indicates that he's also pale and sickly looking like the other ganados, and most tellingly of all, he's able to survive being shot. Interestingly, the merchant seems to have retained his personality and intellect, and unlike the other Ganados, doesn't dissolve when killed, instead showing up as good as new later in the game if you do kill him. So what's going on? Is he a rare Plagueis victim that managed to maintain control of themselves? Is he infected with something else? Is he just a pirate cosplayer with a skin condition that he's actually quite sensitive about, so thanks for that? We don't know, although maybe the upcoming Resident Evil 4 remake will shed some light on the merchant's mysterious origins. Or at least explain why he talks like this when he lives in rural Spain. Got some rare things on sale, stranger. Dude's an enigma. Mary, could you really be in this town? One extremely good mystery we had suggested in the comments of one of our previous videos was how is Mary from Silent Hill 2's favourite holiday destination, Silent Hill? For a start, it's so foggy you can barely see your hand in front of your face, nothing's open, there are no good restaurants, and oh yeah, the streets are full of grotesque, psychosexual nightmare monsters.
Gotta say, that's going to cost it a few stars on TripAdvisor. OK, that's not exactly what the commenter here meant. What they're referring to is the fact that the whole reason main character James is in Silent Hill in the first place is because a letter from his wife Mary, who died three years previously, tells him to go to their special place, which is apparently Silent Hill, as it was a favourite vacation destination of theirs. Our special place. What could she mean? This whole town was our special place. The problem is that, according to 2008 Silent Hill Homecoming, Silent Hill 2 is set in 1993. We know from elsewhere in the series that the local cult that caused Silent Hill to become a mist-fogged, monster-ravaged hellhole was at the height of its power in the mid-1970s, and that Silent Hill has been extremely low on the Condé Nast Traveller Cities You Must Visit list ever since. Even with Mary dying in 1990, that's still way too long ago for her and James to have been taking romantic breaks there together, unless they were in their early teens at the time. So how does James know what Silent Hill looks like without the fog? And why does Mary describe it as their special place? One of the game's designers claimed on Twitter that Silent Hill 2 is actually set in the late 70s or the early 80s, which would explain this, but if that was the case, why not say it in the game instead of having a designer casually mention it on Twitter 20 years after the game came out? The other explanation is that James and Mary just really like the fog and psychosexual nightmare monsters. It takes all sorts, I guess. Hey, thanks for watching this list about unsolved video game mysteries that keep us up at night. But another mystery that I've been thinking about is why won't you click on one of these two videos? Please. Um, it keeps me up at night and I haven't slept for so long. So please, please grant me the, the release of sleep and click on one of these videos. This is one from us. Down here is one from Outside Extra. They're great. And finally, I can rest. Thank you for your time. Please solve the mystery.